In today's video, we're doing Christmas in July, but with a unique twist. This video is also a collaboration with two of my Christmas friends here on YouTube, Anna from The Workshop and Tani from The Christmas Prepper. More on those lovely ladies later. Most of you will know that I originally come from Durban in South Africa. That is along the east coast of South Africa and it is a warm, humid, tropical kind of place. Obviously big city as well, lots of suburbs, but for the most part in the summer, which happens to be around Christmas time obviously because it's in the southern hemisphere, it is really warm. We're talking 38 degrees warm, we're talking about 70 to 100 percent humidity it is warm so we have a warm christmas down under my husband and i were talking the other day about christmases when we were young our families weren't particularly well off um, we had christmases that we still remember fondly now not because of the lavish meal but because of the things we used to do during the day and because of the camaraderie and the family fun day aspect that it used to bring. In terms of Christmas food and in terms of the Christmas dinner, it was very different to what it is here in the Northern Hemisphere. Like Christmas here now, we'll have a sit down Christmas lunch or dinner um, with a roast meat of some kind and side dishes. Whereas when it's 38 degrees, the last thing you want to be doing as the cook on Christmas Day is cooking a, a turkey in 38 degree heat, having that kitchen being like a furnace while you stand there sweating like a pig, <laughs> making a Christmas lunch for everybody. And nobody really wants to eat a big hot meal because everyone is hot, everyone's bothered. It's 38 degrees. We don't have air conditioning in our houses in South Africa. So the day goes a bit differently. When we were children, I remember growing up with my mum making Christmas Day foods the day before. So she would make the gammon, um, the turkey the day before, wait for it to get cold, slice it up. Christmas Day, we would have those roast meats cold with salads, various different salads. There would be things like a bean salad, um, a carrot salad, um, sweet corn bake perhaps we used to have things like a potato salad but the salads used to be something that you could make the night before stick it in the fridge and people could just graze all day long in terms of dessert on christmas day we would have something along the lines of a fridge tart um, cheesecake maybe and i always remember having a massive five liter tub of vanilla ice cream where you could just dig in with lots of little sauces to make your, your toppings and sauces to make a, a kind of a sundae in a bowl rather than a sundae in a glass. To me, that was Christmas day. There was always a Christmas cake of some sort um, out of the table as well. And people would just help themselves as the day went along. There was no real set time to eat lunch. There was no real set time to have dessert. It kind of went along, it, it kind of went along with the flow because we spent most of the day in the pool. It was so hot that we would come out to eat, go and, and get some sun cream, jump back in the pool. There'd be volleyball in the pool, playing with um, lilos and, and floating flotation devices in the pool. And that was Christmas Day for us. There, there was no, oh, it's three o'clock, we need to watch the Queen's speech. There was no, oh, it's this. T it felt loose and fluid and just a day filled with fun, filled with family. Um, you know, that's what we missed. And when I started to think about Christmas in July, the more I thought about it, the more I thought we need to do the kind of Christmas that we remember from when we were children, if at all possible. Of course, the whole family's not here, which is sad. Um, but I decided to do a Christmas in July, South African style, sort of more traditional and more the way we remember it when we were growing up. One thing I will say is that I have taken some um, some artistic license with the decor for the Christmas in July this year um, and back home 
we would have Christmas decorations just like everybody else does. Um, red, green, gold, that kind of Christmas decoration, decorations on the table, uh, Santa napkins, the traditional kind of Christmassy vibe going on there. But because I kind of feel nostalgic and because I wanted it to feel more like an African-y kind of theme, I've gone for touches of colour from this, the African sunset, things that we miss. I've gone for muted tones, I've used guinea fowl feathers, I've used pampas grass to add a bit of texture. I've gone for a slightly more traditional African-y kind of theme without being big five in your face lions and giraffe and zebras but I hope you enjoyed nonetheless I'm putting together some of the favorite dishes that we used to have as children and I hope you enjoy watching this video I hope you maybe try some of the dishes because they're not overtly Christmassy like there's no um, mince pies although we do have them at Christmas in South Africa I just couldn't bear making them in this heat it's been really warm this week so I hope you enjoy um, so come along with me cook with me i have a bit of an african vibe and i hope you enjoy i wake up to a beautiful sunrise not quite an african sunrise but beautiful nonetheless i'm lighting my new favorite candle by albert and bear called coconut and beaches it gives me a real summer vibe First thing I'm going to do is make a floral arrangement in this poiki pot. I believe in other parts of the world it's called a Dutch oven, but this is a poiki pot used in South Africa for casseroles on the fire. I'm just putting some oasis that I've soaked overnight in the bottom to prepare my floral arrangement. I'm making it in. I'm going to break away for a moment to tell you about our first collaborator in today's video. Tani from The Christmas Prepper is a big fan of Christmas and preparing for Christmas. Alongside her active Instagram, she is the host of The Christmas Prepper podcast, available on Spotify, and her YouTube channel, Christmas Prepper, where she also has videos about Christmas crafts, baking, DIYs, Christmas preparations, and planning. I'll leave all her links down below. I'm definitely no florist but I'm just cutting down the flowers to the length that I need and then basically just putting them in anywhere I think looks good.
and now on to our second collaborator for this video, Anna from the workshop. Under the starlit sky, peeping through the frosted tips of the trees, a little piece of magic waits for those who believe. Putting the magic and wonder into life one season at a time, but a Christmas planner all year round. From the workshop is a place to share all things Christmas, especially those that look like they've come straight out of THE workshop, with the occasional other seasonal event thrown in for good measure. Anna is also known as Mrs Brimbles on social media platforms where you can also find more Christmas related content. I'll leave Anna's links all down below. Next I'm going to decorate the Christmas tree. Africa, especially South Africa, has massive culture of recycled, reusing and repurposing items. In order to make my African inspired Christmas decorations, I visited loads of charity shops and found some beads that reminded me of sort of African colours, um, textures and I have strung them onto some jewellery fixings, the ones that actually came with the necklaces and with the earrings and I have um, made them into some Christmas decorations with guinea fowl feathers. I'm also using some decorations I cut out of corrugated cardboard and I'm using some gold baubles from my Christmas decorations. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. Simple yet effective and has such a feeling of back home. Repurposed items back home. And now moving on to dessert. This is what is called a peppermint crisp dessert. It used to be named after a kind of chocolate that we used to use in South Africa to put onto the top, called a peppermint crisp. They're no longer available, so now I use Aero Mint. Um, this recipe, I have basically just pared the recipe down so that I can make it for only three people. It usually makes much bigger dessert, and I'll leave the recipe down below so that you can make this dessert at home. It is absolutely delicious. I am just crushing up the biscuits here. Um, I'm using digestive biscuits, but you can use graham crackers, you can use rich tea biscuits if you'd like. Um, in South Africa, we actually traditionally use tennis biscuits, um, which have got some coconut in them. So I'm gonna take the biscuit crumbs and mix it with two tablespoons of melted butter or margarine, and I'm gonna mix them together and then put that into the bottom of the bowls to make a base. And while I'm preparing the rest of the dessert, I'm going to put these bowls into the fridge. I want them nice and chill before I put my filling on top.
Next I'm using a tin of Nestle Caramel. You can also use Dr. Delish. And I'm going to put it into my bowl and I'm just going to whisk it a bit to get out any lumps. And then I'm going to add in my softly whipped cream. And I'm going to mix the two of them together to form the middle layer of the dessert. I will be putting on some crushed up um, Aero Mint for the dessert. Here I'm just pouring the middle layer of the dessert on top of the biscuit crumbs, I'm making a mess of it as you can see. I'm just going to get that spread evenly between the three bowls and then I'm going to be adding some whipped cream on the top of each of the desserts, not my daughter's one, she doesn't like cream on the top of things and I'm going to add on my crushed up Aero Mint. Then I'm going to be refrigerating these until they are needed. Next I'm setting up my table. I'm using a new tablecloth from IKEA. I love IKEA's tablecloths. And I'm just going to make the table a bit special. We're not having a buffet because we're not having loads of people around for this um, Christmas in July video. So I'm doing a nice table, a nice sort of African inspired table setup. I really wanted to play with textures here, um, tie the colours together. I really like the, the very faint stripe on the tablecloth and the um, texture of the placemats with the flowers. I just really love how this all turned out. I'm going to be using little table gifts and Christmas crackers. Christmas crackers are traditional in South Africa as well as in England. Um, there are chocolates in both of the gifts because um, the chocolate orange inside the gift is definitely traditional in our family at Christmas and it usually goes in the bottom of the Christmas stocking. Um, I made up some crackers for this event and I put in some of our other favourite chocolates that are the roses ones. And moving on to the sweet corn bake. Here I am greasing a dish and this is such an easy recipe. I'm just literally going to mix everything together, pop it into the greased dish and get that into the oven. I will leave the recipe down below. It's so easy, it's delicious, it's nutritious, definitely worth a try.
Next, I'm going to start working on the German potato salad. I'm going to finally chop half a red onion. Next I'm chopping up three spring onions, um, I'm just going to use those for inside the potato salad as well. This German potato salad is delicious and it is quite simple, it doesn't use mayonnaise at all, it uses more of a vinaigrette to put with the baby potatoes. Next I'm going to be chopping up some parsley, um, I'm not going to be too precious about this and not chop it up too finely. Um, because it will give the salad a bit of texture. So I'm going to use about three tablespoons of chopped up parsley. So now I have taken some bacon and I have cooked it in my air fryer and used the oil to start frying off those onions. I'm now chopping up the bacon um, into small little pieces to add to the salad as well. Next I'm going to start making the dressing. So I'm going to be using apple cider vinegar, Dijon mustard, some water, some sugar. And I'm just going to mix that all around. Now I'm once again I'm paring down this recipe to make just enough for the three of us without having potato salad left around for days and days on end. But I'll leave the recipe down below for you. So my onions are frying off and I am just going to make sure that they don't catch. I want them to be cooked but not browned. I'm going to add in the dressing and mix it with those onions and let it come to a boil and just leave it for about three or four minutes just to simmer off. All that's left to do next is to pour the warm potatoes that I have halved, the baby potatoes, into a bowl and add the onion and dressing mixture and mix this all around. I'm going to add the bacon, the spring onions and the parsley on top, mix it all around and keep it warm until we eat. So I've cooked my gammon in the air fryer um, until it was mostly done. I'm now taking off the top layer of the crackling so that I can serve that separately. And I'm going to score the fat on underneath the crackling. And then I'm going to take some um, apricot jam and just put some of the apricot jam over the fat and cook it back in the air fryer until it is about 75 degrees centigrade in the It can be over this temperature, but I don't want to burn the glaze on the outside. Just like that, lunch is ready. We will first of all go ahead and pull our Christmas crackers. That's what you do on Christmas Day. But on this particular day, it was just far too hot to wear the paper crowns that came with the Christmas crackers because they just tend to stick to the sweat on your forehead. It's a little bit gross. <laughs> so we didn't wear those today. But we opened up our crackers. Um, and then we started to open the table gifts. My family was quite pleased that in Christmas in July, they managed to keep their chocolate orange.
after lunch, we are going to get into the pool, but hubby and I have decided to take a little tipple with us. This is Amarula Cream. It is a South African um, liqueur that is made from the fruit of the marula tree. It has elephants on the front of the bottle because it's said that the elephants eat the fruit that falls off the tree and ferments on the ground and they become drunk from the fruit. I'm not sure if that's true, but um, that's what we've been told. So we're going to enjoy our tipple in the pool. Thank you for spending Christmas in July with us. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and leave me a comment. Thanks so much for watching.